In a world full of uncertainty and emotional upheaval, how often do we feel overwhelmed by the chaos of daily life? The fast-paced and stressful nature of modern life can make peace and stability seem like far-off dreams. But what if there were ancient principles that could help us through this chaos, giving us not only comfort, but also a deep change in how we deal with life's challenges? Stoicism is a philosophy that comes from the calm and wise writings of Marcus Aurelius, Seneca and Epictetus. These philosophers didn't just think about abstract ideas, they also gave people useful ways to deal with their feelings when things go wrong. Remember that you control your mind, not the things that happen to you. If you understand this, you will find strength stated. This quote by Marcus Aurelius sums up the essence of Stoic empowerment. But what does it mean to become emotionally insensitive? According to Stoic principles, it's not about numbing our feelings or putting up walls around our hearts. Instead, it's about developing a strong spirit and a refined way of dealing with our emotions so that we are no longer slaves to our immediate reactions but masters of our own inner world. How can we use these timeless truths to deal with the complicated emotions of today? What insights from these ancient sages can help us achieve not just short-term calm, but lasting emotional resilience and clarity? Join us as we look at the 10 Stoic Rules for Life. Each one gives us a step toward controlling our emotions and living a peaceful, meaningful life. But before we start, I have a small challenge for you. Stay with us until the end of the journey and don't miss any of the milestones. Each milestone and lesson has valuable information that will help you live a more fulfilling life. Let's find out about Rule number one, distinguish between controllables and uncontrollables. When you understand the theory of Stoicism, the line between what we can control and what we can't is a key part of being emotionally strong. Epicus, a Stoic teacher, put this knowledge into his advice. Some things we can change, but not all of them. This principle tells us to look closely at our worries and focus on our own choices and actions instead of worrying about what's going on in other people's lives. If you're late for an important meeting because of a sudden traffic jam, your first instinct might be to get angry or stressed. But if you practice stoicism, you might change your focus from being angry or stressed about the traffic to something you can control, like mentally going over your meeting points or relaxing with some music. This change not only relieves your stress, but also gives you the power to make the best of the situation. Marcus Aurelius, another famous Stoic, has a powerful thought on this subject. You control your mind, not what happens in the outside world. Understand this, and you will find strength in his words. Support the Stoic idea that real resolve comes from inner strength, not from things happening around you. Now think back to the last time something bad happened to you. How did you deal with it? Did you focus on the things you couldn't change? Or were you able to shift your attention to things you could change? Thinking about these kinds of questions can be a life-changing experience that helps us understand how much of our unhappiness comes from fighting things we can't change. This stoic teaching goes beyond just ignoring or stifling our emotions. It leads to a deep understanding that emotional stability comes from knowing what we can really control. It's not about controlling chaos in the outside world. It's about controlling our own reactions and turning chaos into tranquility. Adopting this principle frees us from the controllable and lets us live with purposeful presence and deliberate calmness. One of the most important ideas in the Stoic thought is that we should know the difference between what we can control and what we can't. Epictetus, an old Stoic philosopher, put this idea, which is at the heart of Stoic thought, into words. By knowing and using this difference, you can find more peace of mind and be stronger when life throws you problems. 
We can live a wiser and more peaceful life if we focus on the things we can control and accept the things we can't. Figure out what you can manage. We have power over our thoughts, behaviors, and responses. We can pick how to understand and react to things that happen to us. We can take steps toward good change and personal growth by focusing on these things. Accept the things you can't change. We can't change outside factors like other people's acts or the results of some situations. Accepting that these things are out of your control can help you feel less stressed and frustrated. We don't have to try to change things that can't be changed. Instead, we can work on how we think and act when these things happen. Being mindful and self-aware are good things to do. Being aware of our feelings and thoughts helps us tell the difference between things we can manage and things we can't. Regular self-awareness and thought can help us stay focused on what we can change, which can help us think more clearly and make better decisions. Accept the Stoic two ways of being in charge. This Stoic idea of two kinds of control makes a point of showing us what we can control and what we can't. This way of thinking tells us to spend our time and energy carefully and to stop trying to control things that we can't change. In this way, we build inner peace and strength. Use the idea in your everyday life. Use this stoic concept in the things you do every day. When you're facing a problem or something that makes you stressed, ask yourself if it's something you can control. If it is, do something good about it. If it's not, learn to accept it and think about how you can handle things in a good way. This useful idea can help you live a more peaceful and satisfying life. By understanding the stoic difference between things we can control and things we can't, we can become more strong and calm when life goes through its ups and downs. This knowledge gives us the strength to do good things when we can and find peace in accepting things when we can't. Rule number two, take on challenges as chances to learn and grow. The stoic path to personal growth sees every challenge, not as an issue, but as a necessary chance to grow. This way of looking at things changes how we deal with life's problems, making each one into a chance to improve our character and ideals. Stoicism teaches us to use problems like a sailboat's wind to move forward instead of letting them stop us. For example, think about Thomas Edison and his never-ending experiments with the electric light bulb. He had thousands of failures which were tough problems, but he famously saw them not as failures, but as thousands of ways that did not work, each one bringing him closer to success. He is persistent and sees problems in a positive light, which is in line with the stoic idea of turning problems into chances. How often do we approach problems with the same mindset? Can we, like Edison, see our failures as important steps on the way to success. As the Stoic philosopher Seneca once said, the greater the difficulty, the greater the glory in surmounting it. Pilots get their name from being good in storms and tempests. This quote tells us to see every challenge as a chance to show how strong and determined we are. It's an invitation to not only endure hardships, but also use them to your advantage and find inner peace. Following this rule is important for both living a peaceful and successful life and developing happiness that lasts no matter what happens in the outside world. It makes us think about how we can use this stoic practice in our everyday lives and whether we are ready to turn the next challenge into our biggest chance. This stoic view of life asks us to rethink how we react to problems. If we do this, we can turn our worst experiences into our greatest triumphs, living a life not just of surviving, but also of thriving. This is what emotional resilience is all about, looking past the immediate discomfort and seeing the growth that lies in every challenge. Rule number three, do good things. A plus quality. 
Withers, who didn't have an opponent, announced Seneca, stressing that real virtue isn't just thinking right, but also acting right in the face of everyday problems. Stoicism puts a lot of weight on living by virtue, which means that the most important thing about a good life is not what happens to us, but how we act morally and ethically. When you act with virtue, you always make decisions that are in line with ideals like fairness, courage, knowledge, and moderation. Think of Mandela, who after 27 years in jail chose peace over revenge. Revenge's choice to work for peace and forget those who hurt him is a great example of silent virtue in action. The stoic view that our character is the only thing we truly own and the major source of our happiness can be seen in Mandela's deeds. How many times do we have to make a choice when the right one is obvious, but the easy one looks better? Stoicism teaches us that every choice we make can either make us stronger or weaker as people. Marcus Aurelius said, Don't waste time arguing about what a good man should be. Be one. This direct call to action serves as a reminder that virtue is shown through actions, not words. Now think about your own life. When was the last time you did something just because it was the right thing to do? Was it hard? Did it make you feel good to know you did the right thing? Please share your thoughts and experiences in the comments section below. Let's talk about how the pursuit of virtue has changed your life and how it might lead us to a more peaceful, happy and successful one. This stoic rule to act with virtue is not just about being moral for its own sake. It's about making sure that every choice we make reflects the best of who we are and who we want to be, leaving a legacy of honesty and respect. Be ready for anything. Have you ever planned something and then it didn't work out? Stoicism teaches us to add a reserved clause to our expectations. This is a mental reminder that we can say, I will do this. Adding this to our plans is not about expecting failure, but about getting ready for the unpredictable nature of life, which helps us stay calm when things don't go as planned. This idea is very clear. Shown in the area of space travel, where careful plans often run into problems that are out of their control. Think about a satellite launch that is delayed because of sudden bad weather. The engineers and scientists involved use reserved clauses all the time in their planning because they know that things they can't control may happen. The wise Epictetus told them that people who are ready to change and adapt Keep their projects on track without giving up in sorrow or anger. Your life will go well if you don't try to make things happen the way you want them to. Instead, just accept things as they are. His lessons tell us to make sure that our wants and needs are in line with reality and to change our expectations to account for the unexpected. How often do you set goals with rigid expectations? What would happen in your life if you started planning with the idea that things might go as planned? Adopting this stoic rule can change how we deal with failure and success, leading to a life full of flexibility and resilience. As you think about this, think about how you could use the reserved clause in your daily life. It could be as simple as planning a picnic, knowing that it might rain, or planning another fun activity. Marcus Aurelius rightly pointed out that this practice builds strong emotional resiliency, which means that our peace doesn't depend on perfect conditions, but is a constant in a world that is always changing. Take whatever comes your way because it's part of your fate and what will best meet your wants. This way of thinking can help you live a happier, more successful life. Rule number five. Mindfulness is important. In this fast-paced world, how often do we take a moment to live in the present? Socrates tells us to be mindful, which means being fully present and aware of our thoughts, feelings and behaviors, as well as our surroundings. This stoic practice helps us connect with life more deeply 
by making sure that our responses are in line with our values instead of being based on short-lived urges. For example, the way that high-performance players use mindfulness to help them concentrate during tournaments. For example, a marathon runner might concentrate very hard on her breathing, the rhythm of her stride, and her immediate surroundings in order to stay at the top of her game and not be distracted by the crowd or other runners. This level of mindfulness helps her do her best while staying in the present. Seneca, a Stoic philosopher, said that the only way to be truly happy is to enjoy the present without worrying about what will happen in the future. Stoics believe that peace comes from living fully in the present and not being stressed out about the future or worries about the past. How often do you get lost in thoughts of the past or the future? What would be different if you paid more attention to the present? By practicing mindfulness, we can lower our stress and make daily chores more enjoyable and effective. Start applying this stoic rule to your life by paying attention to the little things that happen and people you meet. Start with something easy, like eating or going for a walk, and really focus on that. This practice of mindfulness will not only make your life more clear and peaceful, but it will also lead you to a path of happiness, success, and peace. We become more aware of our current situation and surroundings when we practice mindfulness. This makes us more emotionally strong and helps us handle life with grace and poise. If you have learned this lesson before getting to rule number six, I want to thank you for sticking with me. Your presence here shows that you are determined to practice and implement stoic strategies to become more valuable. Now let's move on to the last five rules of today's journey. Being fully present and involved in the present moment without judging it is a practice called mindfulness. It is an important part of living a healthy and satisfying life. Mindfulness is an ancient practice that is now backed up by current science. It helps us deal with the challenges of daily life with more focus, peace and strength. We can improve our mental, social and physical health by practicing mindfulness. This can lead to a more useful and peaceful life, helps you control your emotions. Being mindful lets us notice our feelings without getting caught up in them. This exercise can help you deal with stress, lower your worry, and stop your emotions from getting out of hand. By staying in the present, we can handle things with calm and understanding instead of acting on impulse. Helps you concentrate and focus. Regular mindfulness exercise makes it easier to focus and keep our attention. Focusing on the present job is trained in this way, which makes you more productive and less likely to get sidetracked. This sharper attention can help you make better choices and work faster in your personal and business life. Helps with physical health. Mindfulness has been shown to be good for your health in many ways. It can lower blood pressure, ease long-term pain and help you sleep better. Mindfulness lowers stress and strengthens the immune system, which is good for your general health. Encourages self-awareness and growth. Mindfulness helps you think about and understand yourself better. We can find trends that might not be good for us if we understand our thoughts, feelings and actions. Being aware of these things helps us grow as people and make decisions that are in line with our morals and goals makes relationships better. Being aware makes it easier to speak clearly and listen deeply. Being fully present with others helps us understand and feel care for them. Being present and paying attention can make our relationships better, making them more important and satisfying. Bringing mindfulness into our daily lives can have big impacts that last for a long time. Mindfulness helps us live a more balanced and peaceful life by helping us control our emotions, concentrate, stay healthy, become more self-aware and improve our relationships. As long as we do it regularly, we can improve our general health, peace of mind and endurance. 
Rule number six, self-reflection. When did we last stop to think about what we did and how it affected our lives and the lives of those around us? Stoicism stresses how important it is to be able to critically think on our own actions and reasons so that they are more in line with our core values. Take the case of Emily, a young singer with a lot of ability. Emily listens to recordings of herself after every performance, not just to hear the notes she played, but also to understand her stage presence and the emotional connection she made with her audience. This regular self-evaluation helps her keep improving her skills and expressiveness, which helps her grow as an artist and as a person. In his works, Marcus Aurelius, the Stoic Emperor, pushed for this practice. If you look inside, you'll find the fountain of goodness. It will always bubble up if you dig his thoughts. Stress the Stoic idea that thinking about oneself is a source of virtue and personal growth. Think about your own life. When was the last time you stopped to think about the things you do every day? How might this kind of thinking about yourself change how you deal with tomorrow? Taking the time to think on ourselves every day can change how we deal with problems, improve our relationships and make us happier generally. It's not enough to just criticize ourselves. We need to learn more about who we are and how we can improve. Thrive. This stoic practice of self-reflection makes sure that we don't just respond, but also live with purpose and make choices that are in line with our inner values. This is why self-reflection encourages strong emotional strength pointing us toward a life not marked by apathy, but by deeper knowledge and purposeful growth. When you want to improve yourself and grow as a person, self-reflection is a very useful tool. It comes from the Stoic philosophy and means consciously looking at your ideas, actions and reasons for doing them. People who do this exercise get a better sense of their skills and weaknesses, which helps them live more mindfully and make better decisions. You can live a more healthy, focused and purpose-driven life by reflecting on yourself on a regular basis. Know how important it is to think about yourself. Know that thinking about yourself is important for growing as a person. It helps you find ways to improve, figure out what drives people and make sure your actions are in line with your core values. Marcus Aurelius, a famous Stoic philosopher often talked about how important it is to think about yourself in order to live a good life. Set aside regular time to think and reflect. Set aside time each day or week to think about yourself. This could be in the early morning while taking a peaceful walk in the evening or right before bed. By doing this exercise regularly, you can keep growing and becoming more self-aware. Ask important questions. Ask yourself deep questions when you have time to think. Examples are, what did I do well today? What could I have done better? Why did I react the way I did in a certain situation? Plus, how do my actions align with my values and goals? These questions are meant to help you learn more about your actions and thoughts. Write down your ideas. Keep a diary to write down your thoughts. Writing down your ideas helps you understand them better and keep track of your growth over time. This practice not only helps you remember what you've learned, but it also gives you a way to look back and learn from the past. Make changes and show yourself compassion. Change your life for the better with the ideas you get from thinking about yourself. Find steps you can take to improve and try to follow through on them. You should also be kind to yourself and know that growth takes time and it's okay to make mistakes along the way. Be kind and patient as you go on your trip. You can use the power of self-reflection to live a more thoughtful, purposeful and satisfying life by making these habits a part of your daily life. Rule number seven, accept what takes place. Accept the things that fate has tied you to and love the people that fate has brought you together with, but do it with all your heart. 
Marcus Aurelius said that the Stoic rule of taking what happens should be summed up. This acceptance isn't about being passive, it's about facing life's events with calm resilience, knowing that the only thing we can really control is how we react to them. For example, when a small town was hit by an unexpected flood, the people didn't give up. Instead, they accepted the truth of the situation with courage and worked together to rebuild, finding strength and even joy in their shared efforts and resilience. Their story shows how important it is to accept others. Making a terrible event into a powerful way to bring people together big toe. Someone once said, don't try to make things happen the way you want them to. Instead, want them to happen the way they do and your life will go well. This way of thinking helps us match our wants with reality. Lowering our anger and making us feel more at peace. How do you handle situations where things don't go as planned? When did taking something as it was help you understand it better or give you rewards you didn't expect? Adopting this stoic knowledge can have a big impact on our happiness and success. When we accept what happens, we let go of the stress of resistance and let life flow through us, creating a state of peace and effectiveness. Please share your stories with acceptance in the comments below. How has accepting what can't be changed changed your life for the better? This conversation isn't just about making people less sensitive to other people's feelings. It's also about making people more resilient, happy and highly flexible in their outlook on life. Rule number eight, develop your empathy. Being able to understand and share someone else's feelings is a basic stoic practice that makes our relationship stronger and our humanity deeper. Developing empathy helps us see things from other people's points of view and connect with them in meaningful ways. For example, a doctor who treats symptoms and tries to understand his patient's fears and concerns is practicing empathy. Being able to connect with them on a human level not only eases their anxiety, but also builds trust, which leads to better patient outcomes. This shows that caring goes beyond being emotionally aware isn't enough. You have to actively interact with other people's emotional landscapes to create a helpful and understanding space. Sebastian taught that wherever there is a person, there is a chance to be kind. People who are stoic believe that empathy has the power to change people's lives and bring harmony to communities. By practicing empathy, we develop a deeper sense of compassion and a willingness to act without expecting anything in return. These are qualities that are necessary for a peaceful and fulfilling life. How often do you try to truly understand the people around you? What might happen in your relationship if you deepened your empathy? Adding empathy to our daily lives makes our lives richer and more connected. It teaches us to respond not with indifference but with insight, which improves our interactions and helps us live lives full of kindness and understanding. As Marcus Aurelius said, to feel affection for people even when they make mistakes is uniquely human. Let this lead us to a more empathetic way of life that promotes peace, happiness and success. Being able to understand and share other people's thoughts is a very important skill. Having this skill is an important part of emotional intelligence and helps you build strong, valuable connections. Developing empathy can help you in both your personal and business life by making you more compassionate, better able to communicate and more connected to the people around you. According to Stoicism, empathy helps us see that other people are human too, so we can treat them with kindness and respect. Being an active listener. Active listening means paying full attention to what the other person is saying instead of just hearing what they say. In other words, giving the speaker your full attention keeping from being interrupted or distracted, using what you've heard to show that you understand it. 
By carefully listening, you show that you value the other person's point of view and are interested in what they have to say. 2. Learn to take another person's point of view. This means being able to put yourself in their shoes and see things from their point of view. This can be done by asking them open-ended questions to learn more about what they are feeling and thinking, taking into account how you would feel if you were them, taking the time to understand and accept their feelings, even if you don't agree with them. This exercise helps people feel more connected and less judgmental. Develop your emotional intelligence. To be empathetic, you must first be aware of your own feelings and the feelings of others. To become more emotionally aware, regularly check in with yourself to figure out how you're feeling. Look at other people's body language and face reactions to figure out how they're feeling. Show empathy and care for others' feelings and be there for them when they need it. Increasing your emotional awareness can help you better meet the emotional needs of others. Learn how to communicate with empathy. Communicating with empathy means saying what you want to say in a way that takes into account and honors the feelings of others. Among these are using I words to talk about how you feel without blaming or judging others, giving helpful, useful comments that is meant to assist rather than harm, thanks for the work and input of others. When you talk to people with empathy, you make the setting pleasant and helpful, do nice things for other people. Kindness is a useful way to show that you care and have a good effect on other people. You may help people out when they need it without expecting anything in return. Thank the people in your life for being in your life. Do some charity work or community service to help people who are less wealthy. These acts not only help other people, but they also make you more caring and understanding. Getting better at understanding is a process that never ends and needs dedication and practice. You can improve your ability to empathize with others by carefully listening, seeing things from other people's points of view, becoming more emotionally aware, speaking with empathy and doing kind things for other people. This will not only make your interactions better, but it will also help make the world a better place for everyone. Rule number nine, keep things in perspective. Imagine if seeing your biggest problems as small parts of a bigger story could make you stronger and smarter. This is what it means to keep things in perspective. An important part of being patient that helps us see our problems in a bigger picture that has a big impact on how we feel and act. This idea is strongly shown by the story of Admiral James Stockdale, who was a prisoner of war in the Vietnam War. Stockdale locked up Ed for seven years in horrible conditions, and he used stoic principles to get through it. He later said that keeping a broad view of his position was what kept him alive. He didn't just think about his immediate pain or the fact that he didn't know when he would be freed. Instead, he saw his experience as part of a bigger picture that he could change by how he responded. Stockdale's experience and how he used stoic knowledge show how keeping things in perspective can make you strong and able to handle even the worst situations. Epicus once said that what counts is not what happens to you, but how you deal with it. This idea is at the heart of keeping things in perspective. It tells us to look past the current chaos and act with fairness and insight. Think about your own life. When you're in a tough situation, do you get caught up in the small details or do you try to see how these events fit into a bigger picture? What would you be able to do if you saw every problem as an important part of your journey through life? Marcus Aurelius said, You have power over your mind, not outside events. Adopting this stoic rule can greatly change how we understand and respond to life's ups and downs, leading us to a more peaceful and meaningful existence. Realize this, and you will find strength. Let's continue this thought. 
How will keeping a bigger picture change how you deal with upcoming problems? In our never-ending quest to get better, Stoicism gives us a strategy that is both useful and deep. This is the last strategy we'll look at on our personal development journey today. Rule number 10. Prepare for adversity. According to this philosophical rule, we should think about possible problems and mentally practice how to deal with them. This helps us face future challenges with calmness and foresight. The life of the Stoic philosopher Marcus Rufus is a powerful example of this practice. He used his training to stay calm and teach even though he was exiled and going through a lot of personal and political turmoil. His life shows how thinking about problems ahead of time and practicing how to deal with them can turn potential crises into chances to grow as a person and become more resilient. Seneca Another famous Stoic philosopher summed up this way of thinking when he said, He who has anticipated the coming of troubles takes away their power when they arrive. This advice shows how important it is to mentally prepare for trouble, not as a negative acceptance of fate, but as a way to lessen the effects of future shocks. Imagine how different our lives would be if we took this proactive approach. Instead of being caught off guard by setbacks, we could face them with a clear head and a steady heart. By adopting this stoic practice, we push ourselves to plan ahead, and come up with thoughtful solutions to possible problems. This not only softens the blow when bad things happen, but it also improves our general health by giving us a sense of control and readiness. As Marcus Aurelius said, what stands in the way of action becomes the way of action. Adopt this way of thinking to not only get through life's challenges, but to grow in them, finding peace, happiness and success by being ready. As our look at the 10 Stoic rules for life comes to a close, we are reminded of the deep knowledge that the old Stoics shared. These rules, which are based on reason and self-control, are not just abstract ideas. They are also useful tools for building mental strength. It's more like fighting than dancing in the art of living. Marcus Aurelius once said that to get through life, you have to be busy and flexible, not just survive. By applying these stoic ideas to our daily lives, we can boost our inner strength and handle life's difficulties with grace and fairness. Let us then try to put these lessons into practice, creating a life full of peace, happiness and deep humanity. Take these lessons to heart and change how you deal with the complicated world of emotions. If you think these lessons are helpful, please let us know which Stoic principles you like best in the comments below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of our other journeys. Goodbye, and see you soon in next video.